God be with you, lad. What can I do for you? I came to an agreement with Comrade. He's already here. You wouldn't believe how clever that fellow is. Now we really will build that trebuchet. That I guarantee you. Glad I could be of service. I'm truly grateful to you. And the men will be too when the assault starts. Fine work. You've certainly saved many lives. I probably shouldn't, but go and have a look in my trunk. You might find something there you can use. Thank you. See you later. Master Fayfar, how's the trebuchet construction going? Much better now that I have Master Kiza to help me. Although, to be quite honest, it's more a case of me helping him. I'm taking note and learning as I go. Next time round, you'll be the siege master. I rather hope they won't be here next time. How's work going with Master Kieser? Excellent. His knowledge of machinery and mechanics is absolutely astonishing. He's a very gifted man. So you're confident the trebuchet will do its job? Absolutely. It's plain to see Master Kieser knows exactly what he's doing. How much longer do you think it will take? I wouldn't like to hazard a guess. As I understand it, the base is quick to make, but the other parts are more complicated. And then there's all the balancing and setting the trajectory and range. I see. Well, I hope it's ready soon. So do I, Henry. Good luck, then. Greetings. What do you need? How do you like it here, Master Kieser? It's quite satisfactory. Indeed, it's more than satisfactory. I have to commend Master Fayfar for his diligent supervision of the construction work. His extensive knowledge of mechanics is proving most useful. He has the makings of quite a competent siege master. I don't think he's yearning to become one. His life's mission has been to manage the mines. <laughs> we'll see if he feels the same after he has a crack at firing our trebuchet. It's a sight to knock the wind out of any man, especially if he's standing too close. Yeah.
finish it. I'm gonna hang that devil from the back. I'm afraid of that. Good day. So did it help? I've not caught anyone napping on their watch since, so yes, I'd say it helped. I'm glad. I wasn't completely sure that it would. What is your impression of Master Kieser? Sir Hanush thinks he's insane. As crazed as one of those dung-smeared fools reciting the New Testament backwards in the street. But what do you think? Sometimes I think a little craziness is no bad thing. Master Kieser's seen and lived through a lot in his time in foreign lands. And those rockets he was talking about. It all sounds like the babbling of a madman. Maybe. But I'd like to see them. Shooting off. Screaming through the sky like comets. I'm sure they'd be a sight to behold. God be with you. Henry! Goodbye. Greetings. What business have you? What do you think of Master Kieser? I've already asked him to stay on here when this is over. His ideas are incredible, even that trebuchet. I can't wait to launch it. Sounds like you're sorry not to be the siege master. Who knows? I may still get a chance. Goodbye. Greetings. God be with you. Greetings. What business have you? How do you like Master Kieser, Sir Divis? How do I like him? As if it's not enough to hurl giant boulders at my castle, he wants to throw kegs of gunpowder. I understand, but he has to do something. Those boulders could hit my wife, and if they don't get her, the gunpowder could burn her to death along with Sir Radzi. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I know how you feel. I feel much the same. When we're done, what state will my castle be? What will I do if the worst happens? What? Ah, enough of that. Better to spend my time in prayer than worry. I've arranged for a priest to come. He promised to take care of the people around here. Thank you, Henry. Lifting the spirit can help us all. I got hold of a sawbones to take care of our wounded. Thank you. Most of them have already lost their homes. Their lives are all they have left. See you later. Yeah.
Náš tatíček nebo štíč. God save you. What do you think of Master Kaiser? He definitely knows what he's doing. And all that wild talk of his. Rockets and such like. I'd almost let him try it out, but on some other castle. Do you think there's any truth in it? I've never seen such weapons used, so I can't really judge. But if his ideas worked, they'd change the way we make war. He showed me some of the drawings he has with him. I don't know if he's a genius or a madman. Let's see how strong those walls are. Trebuchet has to be calibrated. That's perfectly normal. I'll have the range in no time. Move. Move. Damn it, I have to get to Sir Divish. Sir. They're coming. There's no time. Someone bring water. Breathe, man. You'll be all right. Who's coming? There's an army on the way. And they're carrying the colors of Havel Medic, of Valdek. And they're very close. Havel Medic is surely not coming to help us. Not that bastard. I have a score to sell with him. Gentlemen, Toth's reinforcements are about to descend on us. That swine. How many men? We don't know exactly, but there are many. And they will probably be here by dawn. So soon? How is it that we knew nothing about this before? The whole land is in chaos. It's a wonder we can find out anything at all. If they attack from the rear... We'd be finished. Just as Toth has been planning. The sneaky weasel. He's been one step ahead of us the whole time. Not this time, though. What are you thinking? Robard, how do you think the weather will be tomorrow? Uh, well, sir, uh, if my joints don't deceive me, and they rarely do, it'll rain. It'll rain buckets. Here. We'll make a stand here, I and Radzig's men. You will wait until they charge us, and then strike them from the rear. Here and here. If we succeed, 
We'll have it over and done with before they notice anything in Townburg. It might just work. But we'll have to leave someone in the encampments in case they do come out of Talberg. A few men will be all I need. Well, that depends on whether you can hold out. We don't even know how many there are. We will hold out. I'll give the orders to my men. We will be ready. My part in the battle, sir. A dead I wanted to go with the Scallets, man. I need more than that from you. More, sir? If we can't hold out at the quarry, we're finished. You, I, Hanish, and Radzik. And since Hanish is commanding the flank attack, Radzik is captive and I'm wounded. Captain Robard will be leading on the field. Of course. Who better? There's no question Robard's a good commander. But many of the men will be from Scallets. We need someone there who knows them and has their respect. Sir? I mean you, Henry. But that is... Sir, do you really think I'm someone the men could look up to? Henry, if it weren't for you, we wouldn't even be here today. And everyone knows that. Except you, it seems. In the battle, you and a group of Scarlet's men will be concealed in the woods over the road. But, sir, I think I should... Quiet! Don't underestimate the task I'm setting you. You'll have to keep nervous men on a short reign and not attack too soon. And then conduct the attack on the rear so fiercely and quickly that the foe has no chance to react. If the line should start to break, we need someone with their head firmly on their shoulders to keep control of the men. Hmm. Very well, sir. That's what I like to hear. When you're ready, go and join the Scallets men. They'll be mustering in the woods above the road to retain. If you thought you'd be spending the whole siege sitting on your horses playing dice and swilling ale, you were sadly mistaken. Havel Medic is bearing down on us with his band of goat fuckers. And if there's one thing we pride ourselves on in Talmberg, is that we defend the honor of our goats. All right, now to business. Get ready in the ravine before the bridge to Rovna. We'll drain their blood. God be with you. Take care. Greetings. What do you need? Good luck then. Not yet. Just a little longer. 
their leader. What? This boy. You should show a little more respect, Divish. You'll need it when you kneel before Istvan. Oh, <laughs> now the pup shows his teeth. Hmm. Istvan, you say? Not Sir Istvan? Or Lord Toth? Just how intimate are the two of you? I know him. He's Eric, Toth's captain and right-hand man. Finally, some good news. Shackle him and guard him closely. Those bastards want to destroy our trebuchet.
The damage isn't too serious. So we can shoot? Not just yet. Sir, what are we waiting for? You've heard his threats, Robard. Do you want him to kill Radzik and my wife? We have to consider all our options. And it would be a shame to destroy the castle, too. But how do we get that rat out of there? Sir, I might have a solution. What about exchanging hostages? He was the captain at Vranjik. And he brought Istvan's reinforcements here. He seems to be on very um, intimate terms with Toth. He might be able to tell us something. And he might even be as valuable to his lord as Lady Stephanie and my father are to us. <laughs> You're your father's son, by God. You're a godsend, lad. You're right. We'll interrogate this whore, son, and then decide what to do next. Come to my tent when you've rested. God be with you. We almost had him twice and he's here still. Three times we count on Martin Brunt. True. We could have finished him off there too. Start talking or make your peace with God. Do your worst. I won't betray my lord. Ah, Henry! Just the man I want! This fool would rather hang than sing! You know more about him than we do, so maybe you can get something out of him! Well now, Eric. It is Eric, isn't it? Looks like the boot's on the other foot this time, doesn't it? Fuck you. You need to change your tone. If you start being nice, you might just come out of this alive. So now I'll ask you a few questions, and you'd better think carefully about how you answer them. Who is this Toth? He's an orphan, same as me. The Turks killed his parents, so he started killing Turks. Sigismund needed men like that, so Ishtavan ended up in his service. How did you meet him? He killed my parents. What? Toth killed your parents. You can understand. They were weak. Ishtavan strong. He took better care of me than any father. What is he after? Are you really that clueless? To destroy Wenceslas's allies. You. Who does he take his orders from? 
Are you stupid? He works for Sigismund. How many men does he have in the castle? How should I know? There were nearly 70 of us at the beginning, but there's probably not even half left. But that's still more than there ever were in that castle. More than enough to defend it. Listen to me. Toth has hostages in the castle, and we have you. So, how about an exchange? Do you take him for a fool? Do you really think he'd give up the only thing he has that stops you from attacking? He'll never accept an exchange. You better pray he will, for your own sake. Because once we attack, you'll be worthless to us. And what do you suppose will happen to a worthless bandit? I won't waste any more time on you. You could have saved yourself, but apparently you value your master's skin more than your own. I don't need to save myself. Ishtavan will save me, and he'll kill every last one of you. Why should he save you? He'll sacrifice you, just like everyone in Vranik and Pribislavitz. You're nothing but a common bandit. You don't know anything. He'll come for me, and anyone who lays a finger on me will pay dearly. Now I'm curious. Why would he care that much about you? Could it be your lovers? You'd never understand. For a while there, I thought we'd get nothing out of him. But in the end, he spilled his guts. I thought you were much too easy on him. But it seems your approach was the right one. Well done, lad. Anyway, it's clear that young fellow is no ordinary brigand. And he believes Toth cares about him. We'll just have to see if the bastard cares as much about him as Dimish does about his wife and you about your father. Well, Dimish. I think the time has come to find out just how much Toth values our hostage. Do you want to parley with him yourself? I think I'll leave that to you, Hanush. So be it. I'll do my utmost. Bring the hostage below the battlements. Sir Istvan! What is it? Did our navally visit catch you unprepared? A little, but we've settled in nicely. And this fellow is enjoying our company so much, we simply can't get rid of him. It seems we are in similar situations. Perhaps it's time to send our respective guests home. Not a chance. Do you take me for a fucking fool? Be warned. If anything happens to Eric, I'll let every man jack here have his way with this bitch, and I'll dice Kobila into goulash meat. Nobly spoken, your grace. But for all I know, you may have done that already. Divish, I'm sorry. Greetings, friends. Fear not, Lord Toth is treating us like royalty. They're unharmed, as you can see. But don't try any tricks or they won't be for long, Hanush. It seems your lord doesn't place any great value in you, boy. Go to hell. Oh. <coughs> I'm sorry. It looks like it's not going to be that easy. Well, at least we know they're alive. I didn't expect much of it anyway. He won't harm them as long as we have this fellow. Well, friends, what do you suggest? I'd say we have no choice but to attack. Hmm. It's a great risk, Robard, with Stephanie and Radzig inside. I know how you feel, sir, but Toth is no fool. They are his last safeguard. He will do nothing to harm them until he is sure of victory. Would you be saying that if it were your wife inside? Or your father? Well, let me point out that we have no choice anyway. We don't have enough supplies to keep men here for weeks, 
while gangs of brigands and Sigismund's army roam the countryside. Hmm. Toth won't agree to an exchange, and even if he did, we'd have to let him go. With all his men, he'd be a thorn in our sides till Judgment Day. Sir, a message has arrived. Oh, what is it? Margrave Jobst is approaching with his retinue and wants to speak with you. Jobst, you say? All right. Mm. What is he doing here? Who's Jobst? Jobst of Luxembourg is cousin to King Wenceslaus and Sigismund. He's the Margrave of Moravia. Only a year ago, he was collaborating with Sigismund and the League of Lords. He betrayed King Wenceslas and his ally Prokop. Now, he's changed sides, appointed himself the leader of the rebellion against Sigismund, and wants to liberate Wenceslas. Whichever way the wind blows. Nevertheless, it seems the decision is made for us. We don't want Jobst camping with us in front of our own castle like a band of gypsies. Hmm. I'm afraid you're right, Hanush. All right. We'll let the men rest a while and then attack. Come to me when everything is ready. God be with you. There was precious little in it, and we could have lost everything. That's how it goes in war. But God stood by us. And in the end, they're nothing but a bunch of filthy cutthroats. They're sneak thieves and assassins. But does that make them real soldiers? Well, they're apt to wait till a man nips off into the bushes to relieve himself, lifts up his chainmail tunic, and stab him in the back. Personally, I'd rather face a proper soldier. Because you know just who you're up against. That's probably why Toth is giving us such a hard time. God be with you. Greetings. What do you need? We came at the last moment. True. I feared the worst. I had to flee from the Turks once. But this was an even closer shave. But as for our misfortunate Master Fafer, I fear you may have come too late. I examined his wounds and uh, I'm not sure he's strong enough to pull through. That is too bad. Too bad that you weren't able to escape on time. Yes, Sir Capon took fright, understandably for someone his age. But not to worry, a little practice in killing foes will put steel in him. We came just in time, didn't we? Quite, quite. I thought my last hour had come. But Lord Capon came to our defence and fought like a lion. I'd say he's growing into a proper nobleman at last. I think more people will be changing their minds about him. They should. I owe him my life. God bless him. See you later. God be with you. It seems we came just in time. No, you came too late. The gates were flung open and those bastards poured out. Of course, we knew it could happen, but there was little we could do about it. We were taken by surprise on the field. I know, but I would have preferred you to come at their flank while they were attacking us. It's a good thing nothing happened to Sir Capon. That would have been far worse than a shattered trebuchet. I'd be with you. 
Henry's come to see us. God bless you. What troubles you? How do you feel? <sighs> Pissed off. I'd give anything to have seen you get here sooner. If only Istvan had stayed inside that fucking castle. I remember the first time it happened to me. But that was when you were a young blacksmith when those thugs attacked you. I'm a nobleman trained in combat and siegecraft, and even I... Well, I won't pretend I wasn't terrified. That's how it goes. There's nothing you can do about it. But Master Faithar may not survive the way they hacked him. If I'd been quicker, or if he'd at least started to run, but I... The main thing is it will be easier next time. You won't feel the horror quite so much. I hope so. Or I'll soon be getting sick of your pontifications. See you later. Only I was never much used to the God be with you. Take care.
Nothing against master copyists, but building war engines is a different kettle of fish than mining machinery. Yeah. Greetings. What business have you? Good luck to you. Good day. Take care. Look what I've got. You'll love this. God be with you. See you later. Oh, I'm glad you came. At your service, sir. I'm about to give the order to bombard Talmberg. And since it's mainly thanks to you that we still have a trebuchet, I think you should have the honor of the first shot. But, sir, I have no idea how. Master Kieser and Master Fafar have prepared everything. There's nothing to it. The men will load the trebuchet. All you have to do is pull the lever. Well, I suppose I could manage that. Then we'll bombard Talmberg for several days. Sir Robard will explain what comes next. Good luck. Load the trebuchet!
See you later. Divish said... Sir Divish. <clears throat> Sir Divish said you tell me what happens next. Aye. We're going to watch Istvan shitting himself. That's all? For a few days at least. So if you have anything to attend to, now's the time. Just don't forget to come back. Good luck then. Is something the matter? A few of them have taken to their heels. If they stop in Kutenberg, I'll be glad enough. But I fear they may have other plans. If those were the best of Ishvan's men, they could be lurking in the woods. They'll probably wait to attack us at the worst possible moment. <laughs> My fear, exactly. I won't breathe easy until... until Toth is hanging from the gate. But in the meantime, I'll be glad to know the woods at my back are clear. Can I count on you? Of course, Sir Robot. Would you like me to bring back their gear as evidence they're dead? That's not necessary. I trust you, Hal. You don't even have to do the killing. Just let me know where you find them, and that'll be that. There's no need for you to get hurt in the process. I'm here. Can't you see we're still bombarding? You came too soon. Goodbye. God bless you. What troubles? Good luck then. Greetings. We made it in the nick of time. We failed. That serpent from Valdic gave us the slip. I should have known he'd have his fingers in it all. If only I could catch him. Would you kill him? Maybe. But before that, I'd throw him in the dungeon for a few years. See how much he enjoys it. Still, the best I'll be able to do is lodge a complaint against him when the king returns. And just thinking about it gets my gall. And my arms killing me. Damn it! Goodbye.
under some ha! rock. What are you doing to that lock? Well, you won't forget this in a hurry, because it'll take a nice pile of coin to fix it. Hmm. This is surely no way to treat one of Sir Radzig's men. I dread to think what he'll do when he finds out. Try your fairy tales on someone else. Oh well, what can I do? Here you are. All right. Just make sure it doesn't happen again. Give me back the stolen goods and show me what else you have on you.
Never got the pig turns up willingly for the slaughter. Hey, all of you, gather here, raise the alarm. Over, Over here. here, where is everyone? Yeah. Quick, two arms, get over here. I found all of their campsites. The rest of the woods are clear. That's a relief. Now let's relieve ourselves of this accursed toth. Goodbye.
What? Go and get a light. Someone can be guarding you. Hey, lad! Don't you want a little wager on the rat egg thorn, eh?
I've got something for you. I got them from Uncle Peshek. Just don't go poking them where you shouldn't. Er,、uh, they're lockpicks. They're not really intended for poking in your own locks. True, but at least don't get caught. And if you do, you didn't get them from me. Wouldn't you like to take a stroll somewhere? I'd love to. Home already. <laughs> See you another time then. Yeah. God's blessings. I'd like to make and what prop. I'm in. Uh huh. I. I'm sure you'll be. God save! What can I do for you? God be with you. What? God grant you health. How may I help you? God be with you. Look what I've got. You'll love this.
Potom saya. I'm here. Can't you see was Good luck then. Since Sir Divish's colours still aren't flying over Talmberg, I suppose we'll be attacking. Just so. That Istran's a stubborn bastard. All right. When do we start? There's no reason to wait. Are you really ready? If you need to rest or anything, we can still wait. You won't have another chance until we've won the day. Or until your final rest. I'm ready. Glad to hear it. We're going to attack on two fronts. The North Gate and the West Wall which will scale with ladders. The attack will be split into different stages, taking the outer walls, the inner bailey, and finally the core of the castle and the tower. How are we going to attack the gate? We'll try to do as much damage as we can with the trebuchet first. Kieser claims he can even hit it directly. Even if that's true, we'll have to charge through a downpour of enemy arrows all the way to the portcullis. Portcullis? Fortunately, it's wooden, so we'll be able to break it down. But dealing with the defense in the bailey won't be easy. And what's the plan for attacking the west wall? First, we have to get men to the wall with ladders, which is no easy matter under fire, so we'll need as many men covering them as possible. As soon as the ladders are in place, our foot soldiers will run up and try to scale the wall. Once a few of them get to the battlements, we should quickly gain the upper hand. How will we take the battlements? Either by scaling the west wall, or our men at the gate will help. If they can break through, that is. And the inner bailey? That will be tough. Even if we get through the gate and into the outer bailey, we're still a long way from victory. The castle is designed so we'll be like hens in a coop to anyone with a bow on the inner battlements. We'll have to either fight our way through, or somehow get around them. What about the living quarters? There, I'm worried most about the hostages. Once we're inside, Istvan will know defeat is inevitable, but we'll still have to fight for each and every room. I think I've heard everything I need to know. Do you want to join the attack on the walls or on the gate? Remember, many of the Scalot's men will follow you. It could make a big difference. I'll help with the attack on the walls. I'm proud of you, Henry. You've changed from an insolent pup into a tough, reliable fighter. And as God is my witness, we will kick those horse son's arses. A village lad and an old soldier? <laughs> this man must be shaking in his boots. <laughs> if he's not shaking, then he doesn't know what he's got coming. Just one last thing, though. No matter how good the plan is, something always gets fucked up. Keep your eyes open and take advantage of every chance. Help your comrades, and don't go rushing in where you're outnumbered. We have to take the castle gradually, one position after another. I'll remember that. Good luck to you, Stripling. Good luck to you, 
old soldier. Good luck, then. Thank <laughs> you. 
Bueno. Sir, we should give the order. Let's see if Istvan Toth can worm his way out of this one. Don't tempt fate, Hamish. Istvan! It's over! You want us to come and get you? I wouldn't advise that. Your friend Divish wants to see his wife alive again. And Sir Radzik? Are both hostages unharmed? For now, Hanush, unless circumstances change. Well, I'm glad to hear it. My guest is also safe and sound, but he's also quite keen to go home. I imagine you feel the same way. It's been a long time since you warmed yourself at your own half. I'm in no hurry. I've plenty of supplies here. Grand view and excellent company. What more could I want? Your freedom! Freedom? Freedom to get an arrow in the back? Sir, you're all noblemen here. All bound by honour. I give you my word as a knight and lord, and that of my companions. If you release Lady Stephanie and Sir Radzig, you may leave the castle with your men and go on your way unharmed. And just how far will we get? What good will it do me if your men attack us in the woods instead of here? If you give me your word of honour that you will leave and never return, I promise you safe passage to the boundary of this fiefdom. What happens after that is up to you and the will of God Almighty. Very well then, but I want a small safeguard. I'll give you her ladyship, but Radzig comes with me. I'll release him in scullets. Out of the question! Is our word not good enough for you? Is mine not good enough for you? I swear I'll release him when I get to a safe distance. I'll go with him, Hanush. Let the Lady Stephanie have her freedom now. Father! Don't worry, son. I trust Lord Toth's self-interest more than his word. He wouldn't be fool enough to harm me. If you're certain, Radzig, prepare horses and supplies and tell your men to pull back. We'll come down. You heard him. Get to work. And any man who breaks his truce answers to me. So are you really going to let them go? 
My word is my bond, Henry. He's a cutthroat and a liar. Good men are dead because of him. What's to stop us from skewering him as soon as he sets foot outside? Our honour! If you let him go, he'll do the same again. Or worse, God's justice will find him. And then, he'll get a taste of my mace. If we break our word of honour, we have none. And without honour, we are nothing. Never fear. Your father will be all right. We'll hunt down those vermin yet. Bring the horses. Here she is, as I promised. Not a hair on her head armed. Devish. <laughs> Stephanie. Forgive me, husband. I'm sorry. For what? For letting them into the castle. Oh, come now, my dear. You're not to blame. I didn't know who he was. He said he was your friend. Never mind. Did he hurt you? No. I hope your word can be trusted. Certainly more than yours. If everything goes as agreed, I'll set Radzik free in Scalitz. If anyone tries to follow us, I'll kill him. We won't. My apologies for keeping you from your father, but you'll see each other soon enough. Oh, I almost forgot. Your sword. I expect you'll want it back after all the trouble you went to. Actually, you know what? I think I'll keep it. As a memento. This isn't over. I'll find you. I look forward to it. Yeah! To the battlements. We have to see which way they go. Oh, they really are heading for Scalitz. Mount up, Henry. You've heard what he'll do if we follow them. We're not going to follow them. We just have to collect your father. Or do you want him to walk back here when they release him? What should I say to him? Don't worry. It'll come to you. You'll see. Well, I just hope he'll be there. Alive. plans three days ahead at most. Maybe I really could do something for Rate and its people. Something really big. But well, there'll be plenty of time for that later. The way you found Toph, sneaking into Branick all on your own, well, what I mean is, hats off to you, Hal. You wouldn't catch me doing that. Three days, yeah. I didn't think much about it. I just felt I had to do it. Yeah. This is quite a turnaround, isn't it? Yeah. What do you mean? How long have we known each other? A few weeks? Something like that. Before that, I was chasing wenches around Rate and you were digging turnips. And now look at us. A pair of veterans. Uh, I was an apprentice blacksmith, not a turnip digger. Same difference, you silly bugger.
There's no sign of them. Move on. see your span kept his word, sir. Not half as glad as I am, Your Grace. Well, we kept our word too. And now Toth has had his head start and he's fair game. Which way do they go? To the north, but I would be careful, Sir Hans. Fear not, Your Grace. I have twice as many men as he. <laughs> well, I won't keep you any longer. I'm sure the two of you have a lot to say to each other. Let's go! Right, Father. I am. They treated me quite decently. Although they did steal my horse, so I'll have to go back on foot. It looks like it's all over. Not by a long shot. It won't be over until we get this mess cleared up. And catch that bastard. How could we let him go? Would you rather we killed him? Even if it meant Lady Stephanie and I died too? No, of course not. But what was to stop us from killing him after the exchange? Honour? Honour? If the word of honour of a nobleman could not be trusted, then he would never have agreed to the exchange. And where's the honour in abandoning your son? Hmm. You know how it is. We were young. It happened. And I couldn't marry a commoner. Then your father, I mean Martin, came along and took care of both of you. Well, he knew it. What? That I was your father? Certainly. He was a great man. He took you as his own. And I always kept an eye on you. Of that you can be sure. I know so little about his past. He told you nothing. Oddly enough, even though you don't have his blood, you're very like him. When he was around your age, he became bored of his trade and set out to see the world. He lived through many adventures, even fought in a war. In a war? Yes, in Poland, I believe. And I don't think he cared much for it. That's why he wanted me to stay at home. He spent some time in Prague, then settled in Kuttenberg. But it seems he quarreled with someone there and finally ended up here. You know the rest. I loved him, but even so, uh, I somehow always had a feeling I didn't quite fit in. It was in your blood, I suppose. <laughs> I lost the one thing I had left from him. Your sword. Ah, the sword. It's not my sword. It's yours. For a moment there, it was so near, yet so far. Oh, well, it can't be helped. It was almost within my grasp, but just then I had something else on my mind. Well, I think we may yet have a chance to get it back. This business with Toth is not yet over. Unfortunately. That's a chance I'd welcome. Not just to get the sword, but that bastard Istvan too. And then I'll find that German whoreson who torched Scalitz, and I'll slay him with it. I'll never forget his face. Or his name. Mark Vart von Aulitz. Those are noble intentions, son. But don't forget there are other things in this world that are worth living for. Like what? Look around you. Blue skies overhead, green grass underfoot, beautiful girls, good wine, a few good friends and a fine steed under your backside. Those are things worth living for. Though I can't deny that swine who killed your mother must pay for what he did. But it's better not to dwell too much on that at the cost of those other things.
On the subject of steeds, I think we'll have to ride like the Knights Templar. How's that? Two up. One day I'll tell you how they got their seal. You can take the front. It's like I always imagined it would be, teaching my boy to ride. Although it would be better if you were a little smaller. My word, it's all go today, isn't it? I wonder who this is. I think I know. It's Margrave Jobst. The king's cousin? I wonder what he wants. I guess we'll find out soon enough.
doing well, son. Father. Come now. You know who sired you. That doesn't matter now. I miss you, Emma. I miss you very much. You'll be fine. We're proud of you. For what? I let you down. I lost the sword. I let that bastard get away. Don't be so hard on yourself. There was nothing you could have done to save us. And someone has to live and carry the torch. As for the sword, it's just a thing. You didn't want me fighting. Now look at me. Standing up to evil isn't the same as sowing its seeds. You did what was right. I have to leave you now. No, oh, please. You know I can't stay. Will I ever see you again? God knows. Make her proud. were you dreaming about? I couldn't wake you, and it's well past dawn. Sir Radzik wants you at the upper castle. The lords are in council with Yobst. Right. I'll go straight away. What is it? It's just... I don't know how to address you anymore. All of a sudden, you're Sir Radzig's son, hobnobbing with lords and ladies. And here's me, as common as muck. Oh, give over, you idiot. Do I look like a lord to you? Not really. You're as much a lord as I am a nun. And I've never looked good in a habit. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> or I'll have you clapped in the stocks. Ah, watch what you're doing. There's people walking here.
Heavy? The armor, I mean? I've got something that needs stitching up. Could you do it for me? All right. I can't have you walking around in torn rags, can I? Show it here. Are you going to the meeting with Margrave Jobst as well? I am. What about Istvan? I assume that we didn't catch him? No. Because if we had, you'd be the first one to know. Have no fear. We'll get him eventually. I hope you're right. Anyway, let's go and see what Jobst wants from us. My lords. Christ's blessings on you all. And on you, Lord Capon. And this is my son, Henry. I didn't know you had a son, Sir Redzig. It came as a bit of a surprise to young Henry, too. <laughs> this gentleman here is John II of Liechtenstein, a member of my council. I'm honored, gentlemen. Come join us. Margrave Jobs was just about to tell us the reason for his visit. Your Grace. I'm sure we're all agreed, Your Graces, that all this unrest must come to an end. This kingdom needs a king. The question is, which king? My cousin, Wenceslas IV, who is being held in captivity. I have to confess, my lord, that your answer surprises me a little. If I'm correctly informed until recently, you sided with your other cousin, Sigismund. That I cannot deny, and I have always stated my position plainly. But times have changed. How have they changed, Your Grace? Sir, there is one thing on which we undoubtedly concur. That King Wenceslas, unfortunately, did not inherit his father's gift for governing. Sadly, his failures have cost Bohemia, the nobles, and our whole Luxembourg family a great deal of money and effort. How did the king let it go so far, damn it? It's in his temperament. He cares only for wine, women, and the hunt. A king, in fact, who never wanted to be king. Then why didn't he just let his brother have the crown? <laughs> Young sir, the crown weighs heavy when there are duties to be performed. But to surrender it means giving up great privileges, too. But he did surrender power to his brother. When things started getting out of hand, Wenceslas appealed to Sigismund for help in restoring order. What you're saying, Wenceslas has invited him here? This is starting to make my head spin. Actually, it makes sense when you think about it. Sigismund wanted to re-establish the power of the whole House of Luxembourg. He thought if he helped Wenceslas win the Imperial Crown, in return his brother would help him become the King of the Romans and leave the actual reign of Bohemia and the Empire to him. Sigismund would govern while Wenceslas could carry on doing what he was best at, enjoying the life of the Imperial Court. Why wasn't Wenceslas crowned Holy Roman Emperor long ago? He was already elected King of the Romans. All he had to do was go and let the Pope put the damn Imperial crown on his head. Who knows? Maybe he'd prefer hunting and consorting with bathhouse wenches to spending time with the Pope. Well, so would I, I must admit. <laughs> Sigismund's plan seemed sound enough, but it didn't quite work out, did it? It worked for a while. He and his brother reached an agreement. Sigismund took over administration of the kingdom and began planning Wenceslas's journey to Rome for the imperial coronation. 
But then Wenceslas realized he would just be a puppet with a crown. I must say, Margrave Jobst, Wenceslas and Prokop behave rather like naughty children in need of a good clout about the ears. Sigismund would agree. He was already planning his rule of Bohemia, and all of a sudden, the rug was pulled from under him. I'd say he lost his patience and decided he'd drag Wenceslas to the coronation, kicking and screaming if he had to. Just like a naughty child, as you say. So he abducted him and your brother Prokop, too, if I heard correctly. Correct. And you helped him do it, if I heard correctly. Yes, your graces, it's true. I was there when Sigismund abducted Prokop. I thought everything could somehow be settled, that we could make my brother see sense. But Sigismund just wanted to put an end to the dispute once and for all, whatever the cost. There was nothing I could do to stop him. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Ah. The worst of it is that it was all for nothing. Instead of putting a stop to the revolt, it escalated it, and the result is this chaos we have today. That's true enough, sir. But I must admit now, I'm not sure what your position is. The king is incompetent, but we must protect him. The simple truth, gentlemen, is that for all of Wenceslas's faults, we have no one else. So we'll have to make do with his idleness. People like him, though. But what can we do now? Sigismund has the League of Lords behind him. Otto von Bergolf, Heinrich von Rosenberg... The situation has gotten completely out of control. Now even the nobles of the League of Lords are realizing that Sigismund wasn't the right choice. So now Bergolf is on your side. Are we to assemble an army together with him and face Sigismund on the field of battle? We're not in Hungary now. Such affairs may be settled elegantly without unnecessary hostilities or expenses. I have negotiated an alliance with the Hungarian bishops, the Polish, and of course the Czech nobility, against Sigismund. Every day he is losing the ground under his feet, and that's why I need your help too. What kind of help though? Sigismund has a massive army, and Rosenberg, Burghoff, and Prague are behind him. Do you have an army you could face him with? But that's not what I mean at all. There's been a revolt against Sigismund in Hungary. <laughs> Partly due to my efforts. And now he'll have to choose whether he wants to gain the Bohemian crown, which is a very risky enterprise, or hold on to the Hungarian one. He can't have both. And there's a tough struggle awaiting him in Hungary. I'm not sure he'll win, and Rosenberg and Berghoff know it too. They're not stupid. If the Bohemian nobility stands together, they will turn. We are men of little consequence, Margrave. Radzig here lost everything because of his alliance with Wenceslas. Sir Divish came within a hair of the same fate. Even Ratte is defenseless against Sigismund and the League of Lords. What's more, Your Grace, King Wenceslas languishes in captivity in Vienna. He can't rule too well from there. And what do you propose? To sit with your arms folded till the Bohemian lands are turned to ashes like scarlets? We have to put a stop to this senseless war! And do you know, sir, what the true position of the League of Lords is? I'm not on the best of terms with them at this moment, so you'll have to ask them yourselves. Yes. Why not? I'll go and visit Burgov at his castle and we'll see what he tells me. <laughs> you know, that's not such a bad idea, young sir. True. Though a little risky. I doubt Burgov would harm a blue-blooded envoy. And you can find out what he has to say about developments, and what the League of Lords is planning. Then we'll decide what to do next. I'll help you compose a letter to him. I'd like Henry to come with me. Why not? He's proven himself an able investigator, and he'll also be a good bodyguard if anything should happen. And I'll send Sir John here to Gutenberg to be my eyes and ears there. I believe both your reports will help us get a better grip on the situation. When can you set out? Just as soon as I've packed my things. Excellent. 
Margrave Jobs and I will draft the letter. Get ready, and we'll meet back here. I expect it would be best to write it in your name as Lord of Lipa. Quite so, Margrave. What exactly am I to write? Hmm. Oh, what isn't really the issue. The question is how. We need to learn where they stand on liberating the king and ousting Sigismund. If they'll make trouble or join our side, but... But we have to ask in a way that won't leave Sir Capon being run out of the castle with a whip. Exactly. How about writing that you're concerned about current events and that you want to see things settled peaceably, and then ask the opinion of the League of Lords? Very well said, sir. And what they want to do about freeing King Wenceslas? Whether they think liberating King Wenceslas IV might contribute to resolving the dispute? And what they plan to do about the god-awful mess in this country. What steps they envisage taking to end the pillaging of Bohemia by foreign armies? I couldn't have put it better myself. Well, I'd also venture to suggest one more. What is their stance on my... That is, the initiatives of Margrave Jobst of Moravia and a large part of the Bohemian nobility. Whether they plan to take action against them or support their efforts. You read my thoughts, sir. So, it looks like you're off on a mission. Yes, I can't wait. I don't want to dampen your spirits, my boy, but watch out. These are evil times, and who knows what can happen along the way. Not to mention that Bergov is no saint. Don't worry. I know. You've shown you can fend for yourself, but do take care. You'll be travelling as Lord Capon's bodyguard. You'll be there to make sure nothing untoward happens to him. Keep your eyes peeled and your ears wide open. What Bergov tells you is one thing, but what you see may be quite another. Rest assured, Father. And don't get embroiled in anything else. Just hand over the letter, hear out his reply, and return. Yes, very well. Bergov is at Trotsky Castle. I think you'll find it quite an eye-opener. It's one of the finest castles in the land. It's three days' ride from here, so unless you hit a snag along the way, you'll be back soon enough. Any questions? I'm getting a bit lost in the Luxembourg lineage. It all seems a bit too tangled. The Luxembourgs have ruled the Empire and Bohemia for almost a hundred years now. Emperor Charles brought this land to prominence. When he was in power, things had never been so good. Wenceslas and Sigismund are his sons, but by different mothers. Jobst and Prokop are their cousins. They were entrusted with governing Moravia. But instead, they've been in a bitter armed feud for years, and now Sigismund's fallen out with Wenceslas. Wenceslas also had another brother, the youngest, John of Gerlitz, who was most probably poisoned. They seem like a hot-blooded lot. It's hard to keep up with their affairs, since they tend to change their alliances from one day to the next. Who is he really, this Jobst? The cousin of King Wenceslas. He's the Margrave of Moravia. I admit I don't know what to make of him myself. Until recently, he was allied with the League of Lords. For a time, he even served Rupert of the Palatinate against the King. And now suddenly, he's reversed his position. I don't know what led him to do it, and one can't help being suspicious. It's best to keep a watchful eye on him, but he really is the leader of the resistance against Sigismund these days. We'll just have to see how it all turns out. I'm a bit concerned so many people seem to think so little of King Wenceslas. You knew him, didn't you? What's he really like? <sighs> well, there's no straightforward answer to that question. He certainly makes a great hunting and drinking companion but he can be very fiery and impetuous when things don't go how he'd like them. He never had much of a head for high office. He finds it tiresome. But once a man's grasped the scepter, it's hard to let it go again. You can't just abscond. You've seen for yourself what happens when he disappears for a few months. Better a bad but legitimate king than a bloody war over the throne. Who is this Prokop that Yob spoke of? Yob's brother, the king's cousin. He and Jops warred over Moravian supremacy for years. Then they were allies for a while, betrayed Wenceslas, and sided with Rupert of the Palatinate. But after Sigismund abducted Wenceslas, Prokop fomented a revolt against him, and Sigismund had him captured. 
politics. <laughs> make of it what you will. I, for one, can't make head or tail of it most of the time. The League of Lords and that Burgoff we're off to see. Who are they exactly? The Lords of the powerful houses. Heinrich of Rosenberg, Otto of Burgoff, Heinrich of Raditz and others. They're unhappy with the way their influence declined after Wenceslas surrounded himself with the lesser orders of nobility. They abducted the king years ago and made him bow to their will. They got away with it that time, and now they've joined forces with Sigismund and done it again. But now it seems that Sigismund's behavior is starting to rub them up the wrong way. So they may well be thinking twice. We'll see what Burgoff has to say. I don't know all that much about Sigismund. He's the king's younger brother and king of Hungary in his own right. Seven years ago, he led a crusade against the Turks and was defeated at Nicopolis. Some say it was due to the recklessness of the French knights, most of whom were mercilessly slaughtered. Sigismund is ambitious and capable. He might well make a better ruler than Wenceslas, but he's arrogant and to our misfortune, brutal. Not long ago, he himself was held captive by the Hungarian nobility. They dislike him as much as some of the Czech and German noblemen do his brother Wenceslas. Ironically, Wenceslas joined forces with Jobst to liberate him. And now this is how Sigismund repays his brother. There's no doubt about it. God does move in mysterious ways. Rupert of the Palatinate. That's a name I hadn't heard before today. Rupert is the Prince Elector of the Palatinate. What's a Prince Elector? The Prince Electors are dignitaries of the Holy Roman Empire who have the right to elect the King of the Romans, who would then be crowned Holy Roman Emperor by the Pope. Rupert took the title for himself with the help of three other Prince Electors, even though Wenceslas had already been appointed. Some of the nobility in the Empire recognized Rupert's claim. But when he went to Rome to be crowned emperor, it turned into a fiasco. Now he's doing his utmost to get Wenceslas to acknowledge him, but so far without success. So, now we have two kings of the Romans. Jops sided with Sigismund for a while, but now he switched allegiance. He seems to do that quite a lot. That young man, Sir John of Liechtenstein, why is he here? The Liechtensteins are a powerful Austrian family with estates in Austria and Moravia. Sir John sits on Jobst Council. Since the king's being held captive in Vienna, I suppose it makes sense to have a powerful Austrian house as allies. It could be very useful. That's about all. Very well. Take the letter from Sir Hanush. And good luck, son. So what do you think? So, what do you think of Margrave Jobst, Bernard? From what I've heard about him, I wouldn't trust him if he told me rain was wet. I feel the same. It's never wise to trust a man who's turned his coat more than once. Exactly. And I don't buy that business with Procop. He double-crossed his own brother, and the rest is just his cover-up. On the other hand, if anyone has a chance to oust Sigismund and keep the nobility on his side, it has to be Jobst. Greetings. What do you think of Job's speech, Sir Robard? Honestly, lad, I wouldn't trust a word he says. He'll drag us into something, and when the going gets tough, he'll turn tail and leave us to deal with the consequences. And who is this Jobst exactly? He spent 20 years wrangling over Moravia with his brother, Prokop. Then they suddenly reconciled when Sigismund was captured in Hungary, and they went plundering there, claiming it was with the aim of liberating him. When Wenceslas sent them to parley with his enemy, Rupert of the Palatinate, the pair of them turned coats on the spot, took sides with Rupert, and together with the League of Lords and the Meissen nobles, laid siege to Prague. But then they made terms with the king. He agreed to hand over part of the government, and they sent the Meissoners home. This is no ancient history I'm talking about. It was only two years ago, and now, suddenly, He's Wenceslas' greatest ally. Can you trust someone like that? Do you think that rescuing Wenceslas will help the country, sir? God knows. The king is a drunkard. If he governed instead of boozing, wenching at the baths and hunting, there'd be peace and order. Quite honestly, I'm not surprised the Germans deposed him. 
or that Sigismund's patience ran out. Why? Wenceslas himself sent for Sigismund to help him and made an agreement with him. And when Sigismund started acting as agreed, Wenceslas double-crossed him and claimed the agreement was invalid just because he no longer liked it. What would you have done in Sigismund's place? On the other hand, now we've seen what Sigismund has been getting up to here, it's clear he's no better a sovereign than his brother. And that goes double for Rupert, not to mention Jobst, who might well have his eye on the Bohemian throne too. So, all in all, we're probably best off with the drunkard. Better the devil you know. And what about Prokop? Well, he stayed on the king's side, for most of the time at least, largely because they're birds of a feather. He's not keen on governing either. But woe betide anyone who tries to take control away from him. Then he would turn on his own brother, literally. He often behaves like a rebel, just in grander style. What do you think Sigismund's after? I'd say he wants to restore the Empire to its glory days under his father, Emperor Charles, which his brother seems incapable of doing. But he's also defending the East against the Turks and fighting with his own noblemen at home, battling his brother and cousins here and Rupert and the Meisen nobles in Germany. He has a lot to deal with, and riding roughshod over everyone certainly isn't helping. Mind you, what else is he to do? I think in more settled times he might make quite a good king, but now he's missed his chance. What about the League of Lords and Bergo? What are their objectives? Whenever the king is weak, the nobility tries to grab as much as it can. Not for the good of the country, of course, only for themselves. The League of Lords is full of men like that. When the king was captured the first time, they released him only after he nominated them to high office and ceded some of his power to them. Now that he's held captive a second time, they run the country at Sigismund's behest. Burgov is the highest vice chamberlain in the land. As soon as the king was captured, he declared a pogrom on the Jews and raised the tax dues of towns and monasteries. Watch his step with him. And what about Rupert of the Palatina? What does he want? Rupert. He appointed himself king of the Romans. And ever since then, he's been making the tactical moves of a coward who's not sure what to do. If Wenceslas were a man worth his salt, he'd have dealt with him long ago. But then, if Wenceslas was any use... He wouldn't be languishing behind bars in Vienna right now. Good. That was all I needed to know. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Bear up and take care of yourself. The world is a dangerous place, and Burgov's a dangerous man. Take care. How are you? Goodbye. I believe we have written it well, gentlemen. Without a doubt. No one could deduce from this whether we are Sigismund's allies or foes. <laughs> I must travel back to Brno now, but soon I will go to Brandenburg and I will stop here on the way back. By then, Sir Capon should be back and we can discuss how to proceed. Right. Before you leave, my lord, there is one thing that gives me no rest. Why did Sigismund come as a foe? It makes no sense. If I may, sir, I think I can explain. Oh, please enlighten us, young sir. I live not far from Hungary, where Sigismund reigns. It is a savage country, and the constant war with the Turks has hardened the people. They need a monarch with an iron hand. So when Sigismund felt the wind of revolt, he reacted as he would at home. Only what works on the Hungarian nobles does not work here in Bohemia. Bringing order is one thing, but slaughtering and pillaging with a horde of barbarians quite another. Uh, what purpose does that serve? But Sigismund did give the Bohemian nobles a chance to take his side. It was only when they refused his ultimatum that he lost patience and took to the sword. As for the barbarians, he could afford nothing better. The Hungarian nobility would gain nothing from joining his campaign in Bohemia. He didn't have enough coin for a regular army, and so he recruited the Cumans. 
What he does not pay them, they make up for in plunder. But in the end, he didn't have enough to even satisfy the Cumans. That's why he raided Gutenberg and Scarlet's. He wanted the silver. That makes sense. My lords, how's the letter coming along? It's done. Then we can be on our way. Now remember what we said, boy. All you have to do is deliver the letter, listen to the answer, and come back here. Don't provoke Burkhoff in any way. Provoke? Me? Never, Uncle. We'll be back in a few days. Farewell, Your Graces. Come, Henry, my men are waiting. I wish you Godspeed. Come now, Hal. My men are mustered in the courtyard. We can get going. What the? Look out! Oh. Can we set off now, Henry? Of course. I can't wait. So, to horse! The Lord of Burgov is bound to be waiting as eagerly. Look what I've got. You'll love... I'm getting used to it. What about Rodzik? Has he accounted for not owning up to you the whole time? He explained it. All will be well, I think. Glad to hear it. It's far more acceptable for a nobleman to befriend a noble bastard than a blacksmith's son. Mind you, don't come to blows with a blacksmith, my young lord. What do you think about Sir Yobst and his plan? Well, I admit all the scheming has me a little lost. I thought Sigismund was the devil, Wenceslas a martyr, those on his side the heroes, and those against him the villain. I believed we'd rescue the king and all would be well again. But now it looks a lot more complicated. <laughs> exactly. I didn't expect the noble lords to be as noble as the angels, but I hadn't expected such a sewer. They behave like children. I can't fathom how after all this backstabbing they're somehow still on speaking terms. I don't know either. Beggar's belief. Did you know that King Wenceslas is such a... such a... Feckless drunkard. Not really. And to be honest, I'm not sure I wanted to know. I slept better believing my fate was watched over by a wise and powerful monarch. So did I. What a dismal world when you can't keep trust in your own king. On the other hand, times were better with him here than with him gone. Isn't that the truth? What do you think of Sigismund? If I were him, I'd have had enough of my brother even sooner. But he's a monster. Look at what those hordes of his are getting up to here. What he did in Scalitz. True enough. On the other hand, if Wenceslas and Prokop hadn't double-crossed him, None of this would have happened. No one forced him to burn scallops. That's a fact. But he couldn't let him shit all over him either. Not that I'm defending. He's a weasel. No doubt about that.
Do you know anything about Prokop? Ha! <laughs> so Hannah she could tell you a thing or two about it. Why? Last winter, a certain Sir Jan Sokol of Lambert, a well-known knight, or robber baron to some, tried to occupy the city of Iglau, which was on the orders of none other than Prokop. And what has that got to do with Hannes? Well, he was there with him. Of course that's not something to brag about in front of Yops. And what was it all about? They wanted to occupy a city that was on the side of the League of Lords, but despite there being several hundred strong, they didn't take it. For one thing, they couldn't get past the eight loud women, with their pitchforks and cauldrons of hot water. <laughs> I would never have thought of Sir Hannes as such a rebel. And have you heard anything about Rupert of the Palatinate? A little. He can't manage even to wrest power from a king who doesn't much care for ruling and isn't fighting back. That doesn't seem like a man who has what it takes to rule. And that's all I need to know. And that Burgoff we're going to see, do you know anything about him? I haven't heard much good about him, but I have a feeling that some other nobles are quite in awe of him. And his castle is apparently quite impressive. I'll be interested to see for myself. And what about the League of Lords? Wealthy, pompous. The king doesn't seem to like them much. He's chosen to let the lesser ranks of the nobility into his circle. Men like your father. I admit, I don't blame him one bit. But the lords weren't happy about their lost influence, so they put their foot down. If I were Wenceslas, I'd have let them hang after they abducted me the first time. But he gave them seats at the provincial council. Little wonder they're back at their old tricks. Look what I've got for you. You'll love...
How about it, Henry? Can we go? Are you ready for this? Of course. At last I'll get to see more of the country and have a bit of an outing. Quite. Let's get to it then. I finally have the feeling we're doing something worthwhile. We're helping to save the king. Instead of saving his drunken majesty, I'd rather find that horse who murdered my parents, get the sword back from him, and skewer him with it. Cheer up, Henry. I have a feeling you'll get your chance one day, and it won't be long in coming. Forward, men! Our dentist Fortuna, you must!